There is a lot of talk today about uh, getting Poland inside of the European Union. I posted yesterday that Vladimir Zelensky appears to be a legitimate Ukrainian president. In other words, he did justify his presidential, I should say, presidency. Um, I'm saying this because I have no indicators that what I was told in MK Ultra about Ukrainian bloggers, about Ukrainian independent media providers, how those would be connected straight to a front lines. Uh, and, you know, if anything would suggest that it's like critical stuff happening on the front lines. Um, not only they will be connected to the front lines, but they will be connected to one another across Ukraine. They would trigger a mechanism that would alert the world about what's happening in Ukraine. That's what I was assured. And I was really worried about Zelensky uh, during MK Ultra. And so I wanted some kind of guarantee. I wanted something, and probably that had a lot to do with me too, that kind of mechanism, because I was the one who was worried about how things are going to run in Ukraine. They're in fully blown war, which was coming on Ukraine. And so they... The bloggers alone, the people that were involved in MK Ultra that I see on the internet, uh, they assured me that they will work foremost together with one another, protecting one another, and foremost, actually, I should, you know, even more so, they will be connected straight to the front lines uh, with people that would give them a feedback as for what it is, anything critical that would be immediately reported to them. And if the government would not act, it would be delivered to the broader on a broader picture to the world. Now, I see something here about Poland, you know, the next, basically the same day, I, I wrote this today. And now I see stuff coming out about uh, what is this here, the Pollocks. Uh, Poland claims Ukraine can only dream about European accession without agreements on summation. All right, I'm not going to get into this stuff here. Uh, this is none of my business, really. Uh, I did stress the issue that this is not a time to discuss uh, issues such as Human exhumations. Uh, this is I I don't know what to say. Yeah, I don't. This is insane. Yeah, the, I'm not going to get into it. We we already discussed these issues. I I did discuss these issues already, right? Uh, but I do want to discuss this issue here. If the internet is going to allow me, we will. I am worried about this, um, anything that would suggest me, uh, you know, any kind of behavior, strange behavior from politicians, uh, I get I get um, I get frustrated about. Uh, no, not the news that you see right there that Zelensky is addressing is not uh, making me nervous. Um, for this stuff here, I don't know what to think. Hopefully, uh, it's not going to turn for the worse. 
there was a scenario also involved that suggested some crazy stuff um, but you know we don't have anything positive about that kind of stuff developing as to yet right I would really not want um, problem with the China because of the Chinese movement itself. I don't believe that we are destined to um, to view one another from the opposite banks of the river. I mean, I don't I don't see China as a threat. I don't see China as a uh, as any kind of threat really except for I would like to see Taiwan left alone and I would also like to see Taiwan um, and it's really not the Taiwan's fault it really is not Taiwan's fault you know Taiwan really did not build against China anything you know and um Taiwan's interest is not to hurt China and China must work with Thailand in a friendly way. Now, you see, the thing is that what I see here, uh, this here is what worries me. Farewell to Russia. Ukraine tax takes one step closer to your European Union membership. I am against European Union membership for Ukraine. Absolutely against it. Uh, because I am for Ukraine. Well, let me explain something. I was favoring European Union membership for Ukraine. Uh, and Ukraine did some stuff to me that made me, this isn't about last year or whatever, this goes way back in time. We have all kinds of runs and zen with Ukraine. Uh, it was completely immature country to step into the European Union for one thing. It was totally immature because with... Ukrainian membership, European membership, we would have Russians or maybe even Ukrainians running around and killing people and doing all kinds of havoc that would be just simply insane to deal with. Uh, basically, it would smash, crash, collapse entire European structure, European Union structure. That's why I was against it. I was against it because the way I was treated, but this goes way back in time. This goes way back in time. It goes to 95 when I was betrayed by Ukrainians alone for demanding Ukraine to retain nuclear bombs, nuclear arsenal. And, you know, they decided instead to give them to Russia and so on. This goes way back in time. It was definitely not a mature country to get into European Union. This is not to say that today Ukraine is not a country mature enough to get inside of the European Union. Ukraine today is a nation that clearly have set its um, vision as a future on which side, not on which side, it's not the correct thing I said right now, side. You should never pick the sides. You should just have your vision for yourself, basically, and that's how you make the difference in this world. I was picking sides for way too long, and it was a bad mistake I paid, you know? Um, but here's the deal with Ukraine. Uh, I am against Ukrainian membership inside of the European Union at this point in time because it's going to do harm to Ukraine. What exactly I mean by this is that I don't want um, a politicians, right? 
You understand me? I don't want the politicians to abuse status like it would go uh, directly under Zelensky. It would be it would grant like Zelensky, like wow, you know, and I got you to the European Union. Now that's a very dangerous, slippery uh, floor to deal with. I don't want to deal at this time. I don't want to have anything to do with that stuff. I I will not go for that. I am not gonna be supporting that kind of stuff. This thing in Ukraine, it's a matter of entire Ukraine, for one thing. And the second thing is, there is no Ukraine without Crimea and without the Donetsk and without eastern part of Ukraine. However, I am proponent of what I already stated earlier, I insisted on. And I also made a mistake because I suggested that Ukraine should be part of European Union. It shouldn't be. Under no circumstances, it shouldn't be. Without Crimea, without Donetsk, without eastern part of Ukraine, European Union should not have the right to welcome Ukraine into European Union. I warn Ukrainians, do not allow European Union to fuck you by welcoming you into European Union as a member state. Till Crimea and eastern part of Ukraine are liberated, do not do that. You will become a subject of, possibly a subject of very likely manipulation, extortion from European side from a lot of politicians in European Union that were preparing this kind of scenario for you. Do not go for that. I would, however, demand for European Union to give Ukrainian citizens, Ukrainians, the right, the same kind of rights that other European Union uh, members, I should say citizens of the member states enjoy as far as the work, uh, the right to, to work inside of the European Union. Uh, again, <clears throat> unless it's Ukraine that needs you at home, That's why these are very, very contradictory and counterproductive issues when say, we will bring Ukraine into European Union. No. No. For the Ukrainian side, this definitely not work. And I, work, I, I talk for the Ukrainian side. I don't want Ukraine inside of the European Union. What I want is Ukraine completely cleaned out completely liberated to the last millimeter, not centimeter, of the land, then I want Ukraine inside of the European Union. I don't want European Union politicians to abuse people of Ukraine. Uh, disaster that Ukraine suffered it goes to really, really substantial land loss, uh, sovereignty loss, and it leads into systematic takedown of Ukraine unless entire Ukrainian territory is liberated. And when you, you know, I see these politicians gathering today in Kiev and stuff like this, uh, signaling uh, a possibility for such thing, uh, that's actually really, really, really not a good stuff. I, I don't like the idea about something like this happening. It's very dangerous. Uh, it's not, it's counterproductive. It doesn't do good for anybody. Um, there are signs 
from the Russia about certain issues that were involved in MK Ultra, uh, <clears throat> which from the Russian side it was suggested uh, such scenario that basically a way out for Vladimir Putin. Um, agreement, in other words, with um, European Union officials about the Russian cooperation on a global level, um, which European Union members uh, members For something totally, totally not related to stability of actually to existence of Ukraine. You got to understand that if Ukraine is going to be left behind, it's going to be morally broken. It will affect the entire population. Uh, it will be more likely the country that will be with packed with the people that it will be a miserable member of European Union that will be waiting between membership, further membership with European Union and Russia. Eventually, it's going to succumb to its knees and will become part of the Russia. And that's going to bring Russia closer, one step closer to border again with, literally with Hungary, Slovakia, Romania, and so on. Uh, this is insane. Because today the war in Ukraine is not the war of for Ukrainian people, of Ukraine. Today, war in Ukraine, we have the war in Ukraine today. It's not the war for Ukraine, for Ukrainian people only. Today, war in Ukraine is the war for Germany, for Italy, for France, for Britain, for United States, for the Western Europe, for the Holland, for the Belgium, for Denmark, Norway, and Finland, and Sweden. This is what made war. The Ukrainian decision that is going to stick to its own picture associate itself with European Union, Western Europe, Western world, not really with the Western world. It's not about the Western world. It's about the foremost. It has to be about the right to trade and with the Chinese and with the Turks and with Africa and with Asia, uh, South America, with the world, based on own preferences, not preferences of somebody else from Moscow that will dictate you on how it will be and this and that. Given that these are what European Union officials favor. You understand me? I have a very bad feeling about these European Union officials because of my case. I don't have a good opinion about these people because these people were never, these people were, we, I never shared any picture with these people. Our visions were completely different. The visions I stood up for were work, the right to exist free of terror, associate, work, uh, you know, move freely. And this is not what, what these people in the European Union were for. They were in it for mental illness. They were in it for their own European vision. And they were in it, I'm talking about the friendliest, the best, the most loyal to me politicians. And they were not only for their vision of Europe, for their vision 
of Europe, for their vision, for their Europe. But for the mental illness of the entire world, I don't think, unfortunately, that these people are not restricted to Europe only. I think we have a problem with the politicians. And this is what I go back when I told you that I fear of politicians like this doing business with Russia. Are threat to entire world, basically. This is what I fear the most. This is where my fears are. That I can tell you that we don't even share the same race, not ethnicity, with these politicians. In my case, I have nothing in common with these people. And it's the mental illness, the sickness. Not only they used against me to throw me literally inside a psychiatric hospital, lies, malicious slander, lies, creation of domestic violence through forced unemployment, through the worst of the worst circumstances. It's the kind of mental illness that's being used to affect the politicians in Eastern Europe through whom they afterwards gain a control over other citizens in Eastern Europe and so on. I don't want to be part of any of that stuff. That's why I warn that it's not a time for Ukraine to get inside of the European Union. It's time to liberate Ukraine and then welcome one into European Union. There is a lot of reasons why I don't want Ukraine inside of the European Union. This is like one of the main. I don't care where you are positioned in the world, where you are at, but you have to agree with me. This is not a time for Ukraine to get into European Union. Not till you Ukraine is completely entirely liberated. The country with the 45 million people, the size of Texas, and exactly what Texas is to the United States of America, as far as oil, Ukraine is to the world concerning grain production, agriculture, and so on. You understand me what I'm saying? So you're not satisfied with this kind of picture uh, giving this to Ukrainian people uh, as a whole, giving them their national integrity and the right to existence, then there is no, no point here in coming to Kiev and uh, making guffes over there with Zelensky and so on. I warned Zelensky about this stuff. It's not going to rationalize your Ukrainian presidency from my point of view. I don't know about other bloggers across Ukraine. I'm Slovenian from Slovenia. But from my point of view, it will not it will not apologize your uh, your presidency absolutely in any way. If if it is so, Do we have this stuff here 10 hours ago? Okay. Yeah. If, I'm going to repeat to you, if it's so, you see this stuff here? If, you feel inside of the European Union, if you do feel inside of the European Union, if you feel inside of the European Union that Ukrainians will be better off becoming member of the European Union, give them the same credentials, give them the same ability to move around the European Union, it's, they're much safer now because people took side in this war 
on Ukraine and there is Ukrainians for Ukraine and there is now very few left of those that are Ukrainians against Ukraine because for the first time this this is this is also a nation in making but it's a nation in making under definition which I stated you they are now safe to deal with they are now part of the they should be considered as you know as legitimate nation that under different circumstances should definitely become part of European Union but for right now giving these people the right to work um, promoting them doing business with them uh, giving them opportunities to earn money uh, giving them chance to associate uh, basically same things as European Union member citizens enjoy is the right thing to do that will do it do your what you have to do first liberate Ukraine then we'll talk about Ukrainian membership I'm saying this to you from the side of the European politicians that are politicians who side with Ukraine that side with the picture that I stated earlier not with mental illness and I'm saying to you this from the perspective of some Ukrainian politician that is weighing in between what exactly is in it for Ukraine as whole so I'm saying this from like strategical point of view on what's in best interest is right now for Ukraine this is fantastic I it's it's taking him a whole lot of time to give me this article here and it seems like it's not even giving one so there is there is stuff happening about in this stuff it's not going to do anything this is not going to apologize so far Zelensky's presidency cannot be justified in absolutely any way Zelensky's presidency will be justified once Ukraine is liberated right now if you take Ukraine inside of the European Union this is the shitty picture as shitty as it gets it doesn't get any shittier it's a it's a crap it's it's something that clearly suggests uh, membership inside of the Ukraine without the quarter of Ukraine uh, go on man who the hell want who the hell needs that kind of stuff it's not gonna allow me to get to this stuff here in the process of joining European Union I'm against it there was time for Ukraine to become European Union member uh, they decided different Angela Merkel decided different Angela Merkel in 2008 changed her mind she wanted a different way uh, now it's not the time now I'm gonna say I will say now it's not time for Ukraine to become European Union member state now it's now I am the one who is against it this kind of uh, disaster that up to very today and if we look at the date November 8 2023 they talk about the biggest donators to Ukraine the biggest donators to Ukraine and the biggest donator to Ukraine is the United States of America it is the biggest donator to Ukraine United States of America okay let's be realistic about this stuff 
Ukraine lost, I'm not going to say quarter of its territory to the Russian bite, but close to. I don't know how much. We have to see that. I got to see that. These are what, like uh, four Belgian states or something like this? It's a whole a lot of land. And the most exclusive land in the world, too, one of the most exclusive. It's called Crimean Peninsula. Fuck this. You get it? You get you get my perspective? It must not be justified with the Ursula von der Leyen and some kind of Ukrainian politician some kind of Bitcoin, another Bitcoin king uh, and seen in the eyes of starved, demolished, suffering Ukrainian people as a valid option out of the struggle with together with, Ukraine, with Vladimir Putin. You understand me what I'm saying? To me, it looks like a rotten deal it looks like a stabbing from behind to Ukrainian nation and it must not be allowed for the stuff like this to happen. So I hope this Ukrainian bloggers that I interacted with during MK Ultra, uh, I hope that these people are really in it for the whole picture just as I am. And do keep promise, do keep uh, connection with Ukrainian front lines. Uh, I've seen some horrific reports. That's a warning to Zelensky. The news I do not like. Okay. The news I do not like, actually, I'm going to say to you that was involved in MK Ultra. The kind of news I don't like about Zelensky is actually this news here. I said earlier it doesn't bother me. Well, it does bother me because this was involved in MK Ultra. this news here. So it's the kind of stuff that bothers me. Zelensky discussing the issue of killed Ukrainian troops on the front line. That was the news earlier. Uh, actually, it's the news that bothers me because it was involved in MK Ultra. That's one thing I've got to tell you straight. Why does it bother me, the news like this? Because it's this kind of news that was involved in MK Ultra, obviously was negotiated with the Russians, and it's the kind of news involved in MK Ultra that is actually suggesting unreal a list of unreal events in Ukraine happening. When you start to do stuff like this, you blur the picture, and the people who watch, who participate in this stuff no longer have control, no longer know what's going on. So I'm going to give Ukrainian President Zelensky a big minus on that issue. Another minus I'm going to give him on joining European Union uh, on a news such as this, let's say, Ukraine troops exhausted is eyewitness. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? Under this video, I'm going to post you another video below. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to put another video below. Which I have created and I wasn't going to put that online. But because of this stuff, actually, I will put this online. This is total shit, Mr. Zelensky. In that video below, I'm going to explain to you 
what exactly do I expect from your uh, from your how, what do I expect from your how to be treated as those who serve on the front lines? Given that these are Ukrainian people, given that you have only 700,000 people in service right now, I do believe that you should absolutely increase the number of those who can serve legible to serve in the military maybe even up to four times or up to four times more to make damn sure that none of these people in these ditches at the front line would not stick inside of them for longer than two weeks this kind of work in the front line is the same kind of work as at your local factory wherever it is that one manufacturer cars or pharmaceutical whatever industry people should be rotating now i know that when you go to work you can ro rotate in three shifts but in the front line it's not so easy because you have to be updated on what goes on uh you have to be before you take your assignment you have to be updated and even trained on the circumstances you should even participate inside of those ditches with already existing soldiers for you to get used to and so that you can carry on further the new assignments well as to the people that are inside of the ditches for two weeks that they spend at the time they should go in the rear they should put sneakers running shoes on hiking shoes on and go every day at least 20 30 kilometers walking with also having a physical exercise 30 kilometers a day you should do then you should return back to your ditches so that you're, you're full of oxygen ready and professional as it gets sharp as it gets so you can continue to operate safely exhaustion and that kind of stuff this is a terrible thing for me to read and it falls on those that are today in ukraine to suggest ukraine uh, european union membership it goes straight to the ursula von der leyen and other uh, politicians such as italian meloni and so on and so forth a bunch of people that you know like you read in a wikipedia which are the biggest donors to to ukraine right and it's united it starts with united states of america and so what exactly have united states of america provided for ukraine so far if it's not going to liberate one entirely i'm going to say to you jack shit. it provided absolutely nothing for ukraine let me ask you a question trump demanded for me to say that it's European, whose fault is it, and this and that, that it should be, Donald Trump demanded for me to take side right now and start to instigate on how Europeans are not paying enough, they don't give enough money, together with Joe Biden, insisted, that's when it's going to be, we're going to be able to see if, you, if there is any American in you and so on, and I'm going to say to you, my friends, I will say to you, fuck you. And I'm going to accent again, my friends. You're a pal, you're a pals from hell. I know what kind of shit you are. You are not my friends, for one thing. You're a scum. No good, for one thing. And the second thing is, when you go to work, now I'm asking broad audience, when you go to work to the factory, what are you compensated based on? Are you compensated based on how many hours you spend in there or based on production, 
your output. What is it you, you're paid upon? Okay, well, this is exactly the same thing. So far, the United States provided for Ukraine shit, nothing. Even for those of you who are going to say, oh, all those guided missiles, and it goes same to Britain, and it goes same to Italy, and it goes same to Germany. It's always when you read which are the biggest donors, and they tell how many tanks and this and that and so on, destroyed and so on, and this, that, and this, that. Yeah. I don't want to go and even restrain myself to a statement such as, well, you did not provide any fighter jets because there is million and one way to screw my fighter jets. The fighter jets were screwed up, delivery of fighter jets, which none were ever delivered to Ukraine. The only thing that was delivered to Ukraine were MiG-29, basically Russian, Soviet era fighter jets from other Eastern European countries. And I'm not instigating that, Euro that Ukraine needs fighter jets. I'm talking about Donald Trump right now, and I'm talking about Joe Biden right now. Till the job is done. And it will also depend how the job is done. I don't want to talk about the biggest donators. If you go to Wikipedia, and then you can see which are the European countries that donated the biggest to, uh, to Ukraine. And you will have you will have Germany, Italy, and France, and Britain, and so on. You know, it does not summarize to these issues. These issues are also in a process they were delayed. And when Ukrainian military needed those options, they were not even available. They were nowhere to be found. They were delayed. The fighter jets, the Western fighter jets that should be in Ukraine already a year ago, still did never arrive to Ukraine. Nothing is happening with a quarter of the lost Ukraine. The politicians from the European Union popped up over there asking if it would be okay to accept, obviously, Ukraine into with Zelensky, who definitely did not apologize, rationalize his presidency, uh, you know, making show about Ukraine becoming European Union member. This is the worst, you know. Taking in consideration, this is a war for Italy. This is a war against Italy. Taking in consideration that this is a war against Germany. This is because of whom Ukrainian people suffer today. This is because of whom Ukrainian people suffer today. That exactly zero fighter jets were provided by these countries. Certain arsenal never was used that would otherwise be used if it was directly war against them and so on. Uh, even lack of involvement of people. They talk about some kind of international people, foreign legion and all kinds of legion. Not foreign legion. But people, really good people, the best people in the world, I would say, that fight on Ukrainian side. However, I haven't seen regular troops from Italy or France or Germany or Britain or Spain or Holland or Scandinavia participating in war in Ukraine. I haven't seen any of that. Yeah, you don't have to put Ukraine to uh, NATO membership status or European Union status to grant Ukrainian people the same rights as to uh, other membership citizens, citizens of other membership states, European Union membership states enjoy. You don't have to do that. Yeah, you can. You can just do it like that. You can. You can void. You can write down that this is a member. Uh, actually, you know, applicant that is under given circumstances, given this type of. Uh, you know, 
ability for their citizens that this is a form of assistance. And nobody is saying that you don't have the right to send the military, the necessary arsenal from Western Europe, which is like disaster. Really, I read this is a disaster and it's greatly contributed to Zelensky. Zelensky is talking of these days, he spent week, two weeks talking about that the whole world is, two weeks he spent talking about that the whole world is watching Israel and not Ukraine. Actually, this, he started tactically, which was the right thing to do to warn about this, but you, you wasted three weeks, excuse me, saying that the whole world is looking at Israel and not Ukraine, actually Gaza, Palestine, Gaza conflict, and not Ukraine, rather than talking about the issues I'm talking about right now. If I ask you, Zelensky, have you ever voiced any of these issues? And your answer is going to be no. And that will make you like a total shit president in my eyes. Still, I'm going to say, given that you do know what you're doing and all the assurances I was given by Americans, by Western European politicians, by your own bloggers from Ukraine, like let's say this guy here, let's say this guy was involved in Ukraine. Uh, um, Uh, excuse me, in Ukraine. This guy was involved in MK Ultra. I traveled, I'm not going to say with him, but he had me hijacked to Turkey uh, and other locations. Denis Davidov, is it? I think, I think it is, right? Yeah, Denis Davidov, yeah. Uh, this guy. He seems like he gets a really good background about what goes on and he's not the only one there is a whole chain of these people okay given you understand me given that these people have not reported anything irregular you know stuff that should be like giving like totally alarming the situation is what i'm giving you a green light on your presidency Given that you have taken a lot of tanks out, a lot of armored vehicle, a lot of Russian troops that you did, that people continue to engage in this, and that you do have a plan. You have spoke about how you have taken Russian anti-aircraft systems out, and that kind of stuff, for which I don't actually see this as a... I'm not really sure how to see that stuff because of tremendous losses that you suffered uh, you know russians took out with with their systems a lot of you know barely anything lands on a russian soil really that bridge kirch bridge is still standing up uh and vladimir putin has actually uh he did have a chinese military expert in russia uh meeting with him in China and so on with his people, okay? Um, you know, it would open a completely new worm, a box, box worm. However, that's why I'm not a fan of Joe Biden, not of Donald Trump, even less. This can of worms, which was interpreted to me by the Chinese side that first they're going to sell and make money with Ukraine, and then they will do the same thing with the Russia, uh, is just pointing out on a lack of, uh, in a completely controlled war, in a, in a war that is completely agreed upon, Twenty-five years ahead, actually, twenty-five years ahead of the war. 
Do you know when I was in in Ukrainian? Uh, it's it's in a it's it's a village. It's a mine village in an area of Bakhmut. Do you know when I was with the Vladimir Putin there, checking it out? In 95, I was with the Vladimir Putin, first one who went into that city near Bakhmut to check. It's, it's a mine, mine city that they already have reported about. Uh, in 95, Vladimir Putin had me over there checking that stuff out. Do you understand me what the fuck I'm saying? Where I'm coming from? It's pointing out that the whole world was in a total control and in agreement between the Russia and between the West, including with a certain portion, absolutely, of Ukrainian politicians. Some politicians which even fled to the Russia from being persecuted, which suggests that the broader Ukrainian public knew nothing about what the fuck went on. So that's why I'm, when I say this guy, when I see this guy, when I think about these Ukrainian bloggers, I just hope the God that you're not being controlled by some kind of apparatus that favors special circle, Illuminati circle. Because you are the only people that people at the front line with so many Ukrainian lives lost. Now we even have a news that's going to be Ukrainian people that are going to find in, inside of the Russian forces already against Ukraine. So there must be some kind of element of betrayal that is within the Ukrainian troops, at least. The captured Ukrainian soldiers fighting on a Russian side against Ukrainian troops. That exists during the time when on the other side we are discussing about Ukraine joined into European Union rather than taking steps, as I stated earlier, to assure not only Ukrainian integrity but existence of Ukrainian state. And what is, in other words, also security of the European Union member states, NATO, European Union as whole. Well. With the steps I pointed out that are trying to portray as positive, European Union is going to succumb to its knees. We are in a process of recreation of the Soviet Union. With the stuff I am talking about, it's a completely different picture. It's what makes ensured that We have, we are on the same page that we have a common politic rather than the politic of the special interests. And if you're a global citizen, whatever it is that you are, a politic that will be moving in a side of imperialism, colonialism, or I should say recolonization. <clears throat> with Russia, let's say, leading in its quest. Now, I would appeal to the Chinese about this issue to think about what I stated to you here. Russia is not an innocent country. It's aggressor. It's enemy it endangers you not only everybody else and it will depend on decisions that you make now on how you're going to be seen by entire eastern europe There is some other news I would report about. I am not going to be reporting about. It's news that is suggesting that there is some dirty politic that's happening, that is in making behind this whole thing. 
between Russia and European Union officials. We can see what's happening. As a matter of fact, we can see what's happening in uh, in United States with Donald Trump. And we have seen already how far uh, the whole thing have developed so far. We have close to two years of war now in Ukraine. And uh, time-wise and um, results-wise, we have to admit that Ukrainian people the map of today is exactly the map that Vladimir Putin charted with the West inside of my room, inside of this house. It's not moving anywhere. Um, Ukrainian land is lost. And, you know, the West continues to protect their president, Zelensky, uh, Possibly even from something else. I do not know. Now I know that on the video like this, uh, Ukraine is going to, I should say Zelensky's administration is going to quickly demonstrate, because this always was the case, some victories. That type of repeated behavior is also one of the things that worries me with a with a total lack of real what otherwise should be if the european union member state would be assaulted you know this isn't you know that's why i i stated also that i support vladimir Zelensky because you know he has a limited responsibility for this i think he should do more he should have done stuff I have spoken about in this video. But let me ask you a question. If Finland would be attacked, it's not a European Union member, what do you think it would happen? Do you think the response would be the same as it was response on Ukraine? Or do you think it would be a hell that would break out? I think it would be hell that would break out. So we talk about the double standards here not to say what would be if the Sweden would be attacked or uh, let's say if Germany would be attacked or something like this it doesn't have a border and so on but if Poland let's say even would be attacked and we don't know what would be exactly if Poland would be attacked as a NATO member state, which Finland was not, what exactly would happen if it would be attack on Poland, let's say? Okay, so these are the steps. I just gave you the idea, okay? I, I, I just explained to you what your job is, what is expected of you. These are the steps that you should take, do, to welcome Ukraine. Well, of course, in respect to defense, I don't think they would allow Russians to take a millimeter of the Polish land or Finnish land. Okay, so it doesn't matter if they are in NATO members or they're not NATO members. The point here is that if you want to welcome somebody, um, do what you have to do. Do what your priorities call upon you. Do what your, uh, you know what I mean? And grant the membership in European Union and in a NATO afterwards also to Ukraine. Don't fucking tell me you're going to give the membership and, and then what is going to be then? Then it's going to be more difficult. Then things are going to get difficult. Especially because 
the German politicians, French, Italian politicians are going to start to claim that Ukraine now is a member state and we are now at war with directly with Russia. You get it? So as much as I would go and lambast Zelensky about his progress, I don't have the proofs about that stuff. That's one thing about what's happening, whether he's doing good or bad job. Based on MK Ultra stuff, I I don't like the news I, t I talked to you about in respect to Ukrainian troops being exhausted and so on. I don't like the news about the blurry creating a blurry picture suggesting the troops were killed. This was involved in MK Ultra um, due to unprecautions. You know, due to precautions they didn't took, it makes the whole thing, the whole picture blurry. And this is like, on general, when you look at the mainstream media, they report the stuff that happens to the, that happened to the people long time ago, like Zuckerberg had an injury. Zuckerberg had a lot of injuries, by the way. And post in the hospital the other day. I'm just giving you an example. It's what Zuckerberg told me, Bob, Bobby, something for you. But, you know, the year when he says something for you, Bob, Bobby, something for you, the year was like, I don't know, probably I would say 2014, if not 2013. You know what I mean? So when you, when you start to post pictures like this, and a picture could be, recreated and so on so it doesn't matter the police officer from Gainesville had a car accident in 2008 I think it was and they reported one recreated one in 2023 with a literally car as he told me would be stored inside of the garage he would be using exactly the same kind of car but the car that was not crashed and went on and started to report that kind of stuff through the internet for people that were involved in MK Ultra to basically have completely their own vision completely see their through their through their tunnel and depicting me as mentally ill person what's happening in Ukraine today ladies and gentlemen it will actually outline the real illness actually already did. And that's an illness of European Union bureaucrats, illness of American bureaucrats, and also illness of certain Ukrainian bureaucrats. I can't talk about the Russians because Russia is the one that assaulted Ukraine. So. The one that assaults is the one that should know what he's doing. And Vladimir Putin invested a lot of time, a lot of effort, thanks to this European Union, bureaucrats, diplomats, American diplomats, and so on. You understand me what I'm saying? So if you're a blogger from Ukraine and you want to get in touch with me, or you are troops from Ukraine, and you want to get in touch with me, there is a way to get in touch with me. There is a way to communicate with me. You can communicate simply through some media, some journalist like Dennis, let's say, or somebody else. If they don't let you through or whatever, so that we can expose this kind of Bureau crazy, not bureaucracy, but bureau crazy. I don't know. 
how things are. I don't, I don't know, but this is that we live, we definitely live in some kind of boxes detached from what reality should be in a totally controlled world. And that even includes what I presume is Ukrainian president that would otherwise act and cannot, hopefully so, in this ne definitely negotiated war. How much this war was negotiated, as I stated, we yet have to see, but so far, it's difficult to say who is benefiting from within, who is, who is, um, who is taking the edge in it. Russia suffered a lot of losses and everything, but still, Ukraine is being occupied. You can't say that there is not losses that Ukraine suffers from. And when I read that kind of news about Ukrainian troops suffering exhaustion, it pisses me off. It drives me insane. It won't be Ukrainian membership inside of the European Union that will save Ukraine. But it could be that it will be trapped Ukrainian soldiers that are fighting already on, on the Russian side actively, siding with the Russians against Ukraine, that will destroy Ukraine, will be detrimental for Ukraine. You understand me what I'm saying? All right, so that's all I wanted to say. Um, yeah, there is such a stuff like news about that Russia literally did started to employ captured Ukrainian troops. Russia hands captive Ukrainian soldiers heavy what? You see what I'm saying? Uh, Russian strike on soldiers ceremony was a crime. Um, I am more interested in this kind of news here. This is what worries me more. The news I'm going to demonstrate to you, this is a news that is related. To completely other issue. That's actually the stuff that worries me. That's the stuff that worries me. Russia reported is using Ukrainian POV to fight prisoners of war. They fight whom? I will never forget Mariupol. Mariupol hurts me. If I was a Ukrainian president, no way I would ever let people in soldiers, my soldiers of Mariupol in Mariupol behind. I would do whatever the hell it takes. It doesn't matter if I would suffer much greater losses than what the people of Mariupol, the soldiers in Mariupol, but I would not let them behind, not even one soldier behind. That's the kind of stuff that worries me the most. That's also the kind of stuff that's related to this kind of European Union membership, that type of politic. We have a lot of treachery in this stuff, and this kind of treachery is eating the Ukrainian nation from within. This is the stuff that's actually alarming to me. So it's nice that Ursula von der Leyen stopped in Kiev with a proposition, but I think that she could do way better than that. And so far, Western military assistance to Ukraine, I rate one as a total, total disaster. You see this news here? This is the news that's not going to pay for Ukrainian Union, European Union membership.
This kind of news, however, could pay to European Union member states. I must say, as far as Poland, bones excavations and that kind of stuff, all those kind of issues, that stuff is being used for something completely different. Based on my observation, and it was also part of MK Ultra. It was first the Poland that triggered against Ukraine dismissal of the further military assistance. It happened two months ago. It was first the Poland that raised flag alarm. Um, With Canada, they tried to set Zelensky up with Ukrainian Nazi inside of the Canadian parliament. It was example of Poland that Slovakia afterwards, and we are talking about the people that support Donald Trump. We're talking about the people that support what you see here. What is it exactly that you see here? Deutsche Welle reports I have a lot of all kinds of stuff they'd loaded on this Android. What do we see here? It says right there, Boar's Battalion. These two ladies here, it's Germany that reports on this news. This here was my sweetheart that you see right there. A Russian sweetheart. I did not even pay attention to that she was a soldier repeatedly because she was so beautiful to me. And next to her is another lady that was also Russian sweetheart. The Boers battalion that Germans report about and that was another one right there with all these guys that you see right there. Vladimir Putin had me in the area of Moscow, Volgovgrad. He would take me to the military installations throughout Ukraine, uh, throughout Russia. Started doing this kind of stuff with me beginning 2015 actually. because he was going to expand the war on Ukraine, invasion on Ukraine. And they refer to them as my brides to these females, as my wives. Vladimir Putin suggested me in front of these females, beautiful females, and these soldiers that they have to see me, look at me, and for and back and forth, get to use to me, my face, so they would know if they would capture me alongside the Ukrainian border. That's what he claimed. Obviously, he presented this issue to Americans like a beneficial factor, British, as that, you know, I wouldn't be killed in this and that. But he did make statements to me that if I would appear in Ukraine that I would get killed. He was direct about it. Bors Battalion is what Vladimir Putin related during MK Ultra to South African Bors. 
It goes into the larger, bigger picture of this. It goes into into a really, really large MK Ultra picture. All this stuff. I don't know how the hell this shit works, but as you as you see here, my typing with this stuff is not very uh it's not very productive because they screwed up this Android badly. All right, this does it for me. We are good. This is a horror. This is definitely a horror. It's definitely a horror. Um, it's it's terrible stuff. I'm gonna put you the video below. The video is I'm talking about about these female soldiers. You're gonna see the video below. Um, you're gonna see more of these paramedics.